Making your own sketchbooks or your own watercolour sketchbooks is very easy and really enjoyable and it puts you in control of the type of paper you use, the size, the format and so forth. So I want to show you four different ways of making sketchbooks without using any specialist bookbinding equipment because I know that you're probably artists rather than bookbinders. So they might use a bit of glue and board and paper but no needles and threads and presses and things like that. So the four different formats I'm going to show you, this is called a perfect band sketchbook and just look at the lovely paper that I've managed to use in there. Oh that's gorgeous, really pleased with that one. These are two different types of accordion sketchbook, really easy to make um, and you can decorate them or leave them plain. And then the one that I'm going to show you today is a ring binder sketchbook which is really easy and again you can just choose which paper you want to put in it and the one that I'm going to show you I've actually put a whole selection of different papers in so if I was out and about sketching or painting I could choose the perfect one. My name is Liz Chatterton, I'm a professional artist based in Berkshire and every week I bring you a tip, trick or technique that I wish someone had told me about ages ago and this week it's all about making a ring binder sketchbook. Let's have a quick think of what we need to make a ring bound sketchbook like this. Well, we'll need a cover. Depending on how you're going to use your sketchbook and how big it is, you may wish to adjust the covers. This is just made out of mount board, but the one I plan to show you, I'm going to use for outside sketching. So I'm going to have the backboard quite thick which will support my work if I'm working on my knee outside somewhere. We obviously need the paper that's going to go inside. Again your decision about how big you want to do that and the sort of paper you want to use. And the joy of this binding is that you can mix it up. So you can have some watercolour paper, some cartridge paper, whatever. We also need binding rings or you can use thick wire if you haven't got those rings. But we'll need a cutting mat, something sharp to cut, either a sharp knife or scissors. We'll need a ruler for measuring because the more accurate we are, the better the end product. Depending how thick our cover's going to be, we might need a drill because I'm not convinced my hole punch is going to go anywhere through the cover I've got planned. If we want to cover our cover and make it look nice, we'll need a decorative paper and some glue and a brush. And then if we are gluing things, some non-stick paper is incredibly handy. This is literally the middle of a cereal packet. Clean, obviously and it just stops anything gluey sticking to anything else that you don't want it to stick to. And I think that's about it. Oh, something to protect your surface, of course, from the glue, just some newspaper. And uh, yeah, let's get going. This ring bound sketchbook is probably the simplest sketchbook to make, and it has a whole load of advantages besides just being easy to make. Main advantage is that once you've finished up the contents, you can just open up the binders. You see that, just they open really simply. Take out your paper, put more in, whatever. Equally well, if you've done a piece of work that you love, you can easily take it out, frame it, and that's all brilliant. You can make it as big or as small as you want. So really flexible that way. You can add things like a little pocket. You can make it decorated or keep it plain. It's also really good for display. Just a sketch meet or something. And at the end, we have a throwdown where we sh all show what sketches we've done. You know, you can just stand it up like that and use it as a little display easel. The downside is you just need to be a little bit careful with some of your measurements. And let me show you. The space between the hole and the centre must be half or less of the width of that ring because otherwise you will not be able to 
actually get the, the covers flat. Now the first time I made one I used little rings because I thought they looked neater and I couldn't actually have the covers uh, flat open because they sort of fouled each other. I want to make a book for urban sketching or for painting outdoors. So I have decided that I'm going to make it a quarter sheet in size. So I have got, this is Bockingford uh, 140 pounds, which is 300 GSM paper. I am also going to put in a few sheets of white cartridge paper. So if I'm doing an initial sketch, I've got some cartridge paper. So I've cut that to the same size. Then I found an old sketchbook that had some, just a few sheets left of tinted Bockingford paper. So this is watercolour paper, but it's tinted. And I thought, oh, I'll bung that in, that's a good idea. And then this is just cream coloured cartridge paper that I also happen to have. Uh, so I thought, well, yeah, bung that in. So I've got four different sorts of paper that I'm going to put into this sketchbook. I can put them separately, I could mix them up. And of course, if you were going out on a, a sketching trip, you could rearrange them before you go if you know what you want. And I was thinking about the, the support, the back. This is actually the remains of the, the tinted watercolour sketchbook that I've cut out. So I wondered about using and recycling the back of this sketchbook. And then I thought, mm, I'm not sure it's quite stiff enough if I'm going to be sort of sitting with it on my knee. So I've got this, which is, it's like a really stiff foam board. Can you see it hardly moves? And I thought it's relatively lightweight because again, I'm going outside, I'm gonna be carrying this. So I've cut a piece of that. And just so you can see, it's roughly a centimeter wider all the way round. So I'm gonna try that. My slight concern is that because it is a sort of foam board, if it gets wet, then mm, will it all go a bit funny? Well, frankly, if it does, I can always replace it because those binding rings are so easy to take apart and, and change. What I thought about using, this is a commercial sketchbook, really nice one from Artway. Now on this, they use a bit of hardboard as the cover. And I have got some hardboard and I thought, oh, that would be good. The issue basically is my laziness in that I would have to get a saw out to cut it to size. I would say is to learn from these folks, hardboard has like a textured surface and a smooth surface. Make sure the smooth surface is inside because when you are working on that last sheet of paper, you don't want the texture to show through. I want to put a nice cover on it and I'm going to, again, because I like recycling, I'm going to use the back of this sketchbook, cut that off, but it's pretty ugly so I want to cover it and I thought mm, all my decorative papers I've got are all quite small and this is relatively big and then I thought oh I've got an old map and I love old maps I just bought it in a charity shop someone scribbled all over it but I thought given that this is a plan air sketchbook a map would be a brilliant cover. So make sure your cover paper isn't too thin because otherwise when you put the glue on it'll wrinkle up and that'll be a right pain, it'll look messy. Whatever paper you plan to cover your board with, you need to cut a piece that is at least an inch, that's two to three centimetres, bigger all the way round. I've, I've actually done a bit more here. You can mark out where your board is just by drawing round it. Think about the pattern on the other side and centre it if it needs it. Think what's going to show. And then you need to mitre the corners. So that's just cutting off the triangle there. But don't cut right up to the corner. Leave maybe half a centimetre's width and I'll show you why. 
and you just throw those away. Got newspaper down so I don't make a hideous mess because I am really messy. And then I am going to put my glue. The glue I'm using is PVA glue. Ideally, it should be acid free so it doesn't eat into any of the paper. So I'm spreading out the glue just to start with, seeing how much I've got on there and whether it's enough. I might need a bit more because you want to be generous, but not so it's dripping off. And then you need to be super careful with the edges because those are the bits that struggle to stick. And also you need to be super careful not to get glue onto the front cover of the paper. So if you can see, what I'm doing is going outwards, not going backwards and forwards, and that will minimise the risk of getting any glue on the front cover. I'm now going to pick that up, turn my paper over, just to make sure I've got no gluey bits of paper when I put it down again. I'm then going to place my board on those markings and make sure that's nice and flat. And I'm going to start at a short edge and gently fold that over, making sure I don't get any wrinkles. Using my thumbnail or, or an inappropriate nail, I'm nipping in the corners there. It's hard to see, let me do that with my other hand just so that you can actually see. I'm nipping that side in, then I'm going to turn it round and do exactly the same the other end. Now it's time for the long sides and we just fold those over and because we've nipped that corner in, everything is neat and contained. Turn it round and then fold that in. Now this matte paper I thought would be a little bit more robust. I can feel it wrinkling in places. I hope as it dries that'll sort itself out. So there we have our half covered sketchbook cover but this looks a bit messy doesn't it um, and that would be like the inside front of the cover. So what we do is just cut a piece of paper that's slightly smaller than the cover and we're going to stick that on and that will cover all the edges. You could use another bit of the matte paper if you wanted. I'm just going to use a bit of plain cartridge paper. I think that will be fine. So we do the same thing. We're on clean bits of newspaper because we don't want to get glue on the right side. Apply the glue and I'm applying it to the paper rather than the board simply because that border has to stay clean and it would be hard to judge where that was. And again, at the edges, I'm holding it down in place so it doesn't slip around and I'm just sweeping out with the glue so no glue goes on the correct side. And then I'm just going to centre that by eye. I've got a little bit of time to sort of pull it around before the glue dries, don't worry. I now need to cover it with that non-stick paper, just in case there's any surplus glue. Place heavy weights on it. The cookery books are always good. Your big thick art books, books, whatever it is, and let that dry for probably a couple of hours and that will sort out that slight warping that I've got going on. While the cover is drying, let's sort out our paper and get the holes punched. You may have a different sort of hole punch. So this is a single one, and so literally one hole at a time. You might have one that's a double. If you're really lucky, you might even have a quadruple, in which case I'm very envious. I am gonna use the double because it will be twice as quick. What you need to know is the width between the holes. So just measure it centre to centre and mine is eight centimetres. You need to know the width of your piece of paper and mine is 38 centimetres. 
how many eights go into 38? Well, actually there's four, four eights, which is 32. That means I've got six centimetres left over. So I'm going to divide that by two and I will have three centimetres at each end. Let's draw that out. So I've got three centimetres there. Then I will have eight centimetres, eight centimetres, eight, eight and three. Obviously, if you want to do this in inches, that's super. Just work it out so that you've got nice, even holes. So therefore, I will have one, two, three, four, five holes. So I will either have to line this up because obviously that's two holes or last one by hand with, with this little single. If you want your book to open out that way so that it is landscape, obviously you put the holes down the side, but I want my book to open out portrait. So do think where you're gonna put the holes. Let's do one piece of paper to start with, just to make sure my calculations are correct and I'll use a bit of the cartridge paper. So I'm just going to make sure I've got this right. It's one of those things, measure twice, cut it once. So I've said it's three, then it's eight, then it's eight, then it's eight, then it's eight, and it's three. Good, well that, that looks like I've worked it out. I'm sure you know this. But the centre hole in your hole punch, or that hole, points to the centre. So if you put a centre line, it makes lining everything up really nice and easy. So I'm measuring the centre there so I can do two holes. I'm measuring the centre there so I can do holes and I'm going to measure there. And then put it in, line up th those marks. Hope you can see that I'm lining that up. More accurate, the better. And I've got my first two holes there. Lining up. And I've got my next two holes. Now, because this is five, I could line this up and do my next hole, or as I say, I could have done the last hole just singly. And I've got my first sheet of paper. That is all correct. Now I've just got to do the rest. If the paper's quite thin, this is the cartridge paper, you could do a couple of sheets at a time. If it's thicker, just do one at a time. So I've got all those holes punched in the paper and they pretty much line up, which is a miracle. Now we need to sort out the holes in the cover. So these clips, these little rings, you can buy online very easily. They're just called binder rings and they come in all different sizes and made from different materials. So I have plastic ones, I have metal ones. The plastic ones just have three little, oh not three, two, two little dots that keep them closed. There's no hinge because the plastic's flexible and you can just open them like that. So that's super easy. The metal one have a little hinge. You open them and they hinge out and then you push them together and there's a little clip that just keeps them in place. So that's super. These are an inch. You need to measure the internal space and it doesn't actually say just as they're small, well, that's really handy. Um, let's measure that. The internal, that's two centimetres. So I think I mentioned, and it's really worth mentioning again, that the hole has to be less than a half, half or less of that width of the ring from the edge to ensure that you can actually open this out without fouling. I'm gonna use the plastic ones. Say, I know that they are an inch or in centimetres, that's what, 2.8 centimetres. So my hole from the, the edge of, of the cover has to be less than 1.4 centimetres. So just to be on the safe side, especially because this is quite thick, I've marked a line, hope you can see that all along there, which is 
one and a quarter centimeters from the edge and that's where my holes in the cover have got to be uh, price wise you might want to know about these I think I bought a hundred of these rings for about eight or nine pounds online so yeah they, they work out eight or nine pence each so they're not expensive however if you can't get hold of them you could just use ordinary wire and maybe you've got some quite thick garden wire and just put a loop of wire round through each hole you could even use thin ribbon or string and tie it though that wouldn't be as substantial like i'm guessing so i know the holes have to lie on that and probably the easiest thing to make sure that the holes are in this, the right place is to use one of the pieces of paper as a template and then i will put a little mark in the middle of each of those and that's where my holes have got to go now there is no way a hole punch is going to get through this I'm going to have to drill these holes and I think the sensible thing to do would be to drill both the front and the back cover at the same time so the holes match up perfectly so that's my cover it's not quite dry to be honest but I'm so impatient to get going that I'm going to use it anyway and I'm going to just clip them together to make sure nothing slips while I'm drilling I think would be sensible now this is um, I think it's a masonry drill bit I don't know if that's going to be right uh, or whether I should be using a metal bit uh, we're gonna find out because I've never done this before Than I expected. It's putting up more resistance than I anticipated. I'm going to have to, rather than doing both covers together, I am going to have to do them separately. But let's do these holes first. Okay, that, that cover was a lot harder than I thought, so learn from my mistake and think about the cover that you use and how you're going to get the holes in it. Um, but now the nice bit when we construct. So I picked out some rings which I thought would pull out the colours of the, the cover. There you go. I've got all my papers there. I could reorder it if I wanted to. And then I've got my cover at the back. Simply open the ring out and then thread it through. Let's get those off the, out of the way. And this is where we find out whether everything lines up beautifully or whether it's a right old mess. And just thread it through all those holes. When you've got everything through, close your ring in whatever way is appropriate. So that just clips together. And that's the first ring done, which is looking hopeful. I now need to do exactly the same with the other four. Everything's threaded through. So I'm just closing off those little rings. And then, oops. We will see our finished book. Well, I think it looks really funky. I really like those. Now, so I'm not very annoyed that I managed to, to rip the inside of that. But on the bright side, I got my measurements right. The cover actually opens and it will lie flat, which is a huge relief. And then I can go to all my different papers. Yep, that works. Okay, yep, I'm pretty happy with that. To say, apart from that cover, that was harder than, than expected. And I think, on reflection, that a wood drill bit 
would have been better than using a masonry drill bit but hey you live and learn and there is my rather lovely ring bound watercolour sketchbook so apart from the drilling side of things these are really easy to do and I'm sure if I had a sharper drill bit that would have been a lot better